A good place to start is birth. Uh, in my case, uh, birth was in Vienna, Austria, just after Hitler had occupied and seized Austria for Germany. And this was a, a, a significant event, and of course, in our lives. And, and we were expelled. We were not allowed to stay in Vienna. And we moved to the United States. And I became a kind of refugee. Uh, and I think this was uh, important in my further development because it, it showed the relationship between uh, world events and the effect on individuals. And it, it sort of gave me a sense of responsibility, of virtue, uh, civic virtue and uh, civic duty in some ways. One of, one of the things that's interesting is the role that propaganda played in, in World War II, in uh, the occupation of countries. And this itself has been quite interesting for me. Uh, we don't use the term propaganda so much anymore, but s v frequently much of media in democ democratic societies and non-democratic societies can be understood through the lens of propaganda. Re related to that, it, a subject that became fascinating to me was media and conflict zones. Uh, the, the extent to which media uh, encourages conflict and is an instrument for resolving conflict. so that. Media becomes something more than just educate, inform, and entertain. It really becomes a tool for uh, altering the way in which people live and the way in which they govern themselves and, and, and the way they die in some ways. It's hard for me to remember how this affected me when I was a small child. I know that by the time I was in high school, I was a reporter for our high school newspaper. I then became a reporter for our, my college newspaper. And it was interesting to me to see the power that a story could have. A, a story could have the power of freeing a man from prison. It could have the, the power of uh, changing an institution. Uh, when I was uh, a, 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 in my college newspaper, I covered the Cuban Revolution and uh, tried to convey some element of events in Havana to, uh, to a, a sort of uninterested college community. But again, you could see the excitement of journalism, of being a journalist, and the excitement of seeing the effect that a story has on a public. I graduated and, uh, and saw myself as having a career partly in writing and went to work for American Heritage Publishing Company, which was a, a company in the United States that was interested in popularizing history. Uh, and I worked on political campaigns and a number of other elements of things like that. And then, partly because the alternative was the army, I went to law school. That's, uh, and I, I, um, I, I flourished in the law. This is uh, somewhat surprising to me. Uh, I got interested in the law, and in a way I saw the law as itself a form of journalism. Uh, so uh, I went to the Yale Law School, which encouraged thinking like this. There was a a faculty member there named Fred Rodell who had written about the Supreme Court of the United States in a very journalistic vein. And so it, it seemed to me that law could be a continuation of journalism. It was a way of, uh, of understanding complex events, reporting on them, and translating them to other audiences. And then uh, I became a law professor, uh, and, and, and a law professor in a certain sense continues that tradition. When, when I was in college, one of the most interesting courses I took uh, was about Southeast Asia during the occupation by Japan. And one very significant element of that occupation was Japan's understanding of the role of media in gaining a, a, a um, population that is uh, uh, subservient that is, uh, that is truly occupied. And this underscored for me, I think it made a deep impression in terms of the role that media can play and does play and how governments manipulate and use the media to control populations. And um, again, it's, it's about the interrelationship of law and society through the media. Another thing that was important about uh, my time at the Yale Law School was uh, a professor named Telfer Taylor, who had been general counsel of the Federal Communications Commission. And he, too, was very much about uh, the importance of media in society. And one, one thing which I've learned since is that very rarely are there media law courses. So one of the reasons we're having this moot court competition 
is to encourage understanding of media law and encourage the development of media law courses in law schools around the world. As, as the subject becomes so significant and so interesting, it seems to me it offers an opportunity for translating the law into a new context and making it, the law more interesting itself. I've been coming to Oxford since basically 1991 when I spent a sabbatical at the Center for Socio-Legal Studies. And during that sabbatical, uh, I worked on a book on television, public sphere, and national identity. And I uh, gave a talk at the end of my year effort there, which, which suggested the need to develop an institution at Oxford that dealt with comparative media law and policy. In the next year, uh, I, with a friend of mine, Stefan Verhulst, founded the program in comparative media law and policy. And it's really because of our founding of that that later on the, the program decided to name this moot court in my honor. I'm extremely proud of the moot court competition and the care and interest that people in various parts of the world have shown in its development. Uh, media lawyers, uh, professors, uh, practitioners, broadcasters, etc. Many people who have an interest in how the government defines its uh, stake in, in, in the media. The other thing that's been quite thrilling is to see the impact that the moot court has on the societies in which it functions. In India, in Afghanistan, uh, it, it's not just a moot court. I think the program has um, gone out of its way to say it, sh it should be more than a series of arguments. It, it should be thought through in a way that leaves a, an impact on the society, whether it's curricular, or whether it's skill development, uh, or, or whether it's, it's greater understanding by judges. One of the things uh, that my uh, period in teaching, my career in teaching, and especially here at Oxford, has allowed me to do, and I'm really fortunate in this, is to help build a, a kind of network of, in capacity building of young people with an interest in media law and policy. The field has grown, and it's grown partly because of these networks that have been built. And Oxford has been key to this, and the moot court competition has been extraordinary in taking it one step further, maybe three steps further. So all of a sudden, there are individuals with talent and interest being nourished in different parts of the world. And this is important to the future of media law and policy.